I feel very comfortable in saying that MJF Maxwell Jacob Friedman is one of the few great things about AEW. One of the few. Not the only one, but one of the few. Somebody you can actually talk. Somebody that actually works to get heat, wants to get heat, embraces getting heat. He's not trying to be clever and cool. His cool factor comes from the fact that he actually wants to be a heel and can be a great heel without having to say certain things in a lazy way. And it's no surprise to me for somebody that actually tries to be a character, wants to be a character, is a character, has personality, has charisma, can talk on the microphone, proactively seeks out and embraces and treasures the ability to get heat that the stories he's involved in are usually very top-notch. I can point to different points in AEW's two and a half plus year history and say at different moments, multiple moments at that, that whatever MJF was doing was the most interesting thing going on on AEW program. I don't feel bad about saying that whatsoever. He might be the single most interesting thing about AEW today, at least from my perspective. And over the past few weeks, we've seen lots of reports and discussion about MJF and his contract status with AEW. Uh, we know that he signed a five-year deal with the company at the beginning of 2019. Why the hell you do that? I never know. But uh, that contract is set to expire in 2024. And while that seems a long ways away, the reality is you're only about a year and a half, a little bit more than that, from that horizon. And we've heard MJF reference this on Twitter, talk about it in TV, talk about it in his promos, throwing the WWE bug out there, saying it's available to the highest bidder, and all of that. So a lot of discussion, obviously, about MJF and his contract. And when it comes to MJF, I totally get the MJF perspective here. He knows deep down that it was really, really dumb to sign that five-year deal at the beginning of 2019. Now, looking at that at a 2018-2019 lens, when you're talking about maybe what a 22-year-old you know, year old Maxwell Jacob Friedman, you know, maybe not thinking about it from the best business sense. Maybe you want to have some long-term stability, probably saw the money and said, ooh, compared to what I am making, like it's going to give me that guarantee and that certainty for a long period of time. But he has to know, and he knows, that's why he's talking about it now. He knows it was really dumb to sign that five-year deal. I mean, that's what it was. It was really dumb. He knows he's basically getting rookie deal money when he is a main event player. He knows he's getting rookie slot money when he is a franchise player. He knows he should be a top paid guy in AEW and in wrestling as a whole especially compared to some of the people that have come in that have certainly gotten paid more than him to be in AEW. And he's got to look and say, what the hell? And I can't blame him. He's only 26, so he doesn't want to lose what certainly now represents the beginning of this peak earnings power and potential. Why undercut yourself? Why make less than you absolutely could? Why would any of us want to do that? Why should he have to be any different? I realize he doesn't have a ton of immediate leverage, but he does have that WWE future threat out there. And at this point in time, it doesn't really hurt to try and go out there and ask for more money. And basically he can say to AEW, either you're going to pay now or somebody's really going to pay, whether it's you or WWE come 2024. The choice is yours. We're just counting down the time. So I totally get where MJF's coming from. I, I really do. And when you look at the Tony Khan AEW perspective, there's a lot of sensible things here. I mean, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, to me, represents perhaps AEW's single greatest talent signing, especially when you have to look at the perceived and possible value associated with it. There's no way, no way that MJF is even sniffing the territory of the money that guys like Moxley, Punk, Danielson, others get. There's no way. But when you look at cost compared to bang for the buck, there can't be a more profitable talent for AEW than Maxwell Jacob Freeman. And AEW has got to feel great about that. Tony Khan's got to be feel great about that. 
Like, shit, we got this main event player at a bargain basement contract. Understand, you're trying to tread very carefully here, and you don't want to risk pissing off a top talent, because it could be toxic for your locker room, it could be toxic for your on-screen product, it could lead to bad things in the future. You want to create an environment, maybe, where you give off the perception, at least, that you really care about the talent. Um, but you could also say that you have held up your end of the bargain and the dude signed a five-year contract. You were under no absolute literal obligation to renegotiate, extend it, tear it up, redo the deal. You don't have to do any of that. And from a sheer, like, bottom line numbers business standpoint, you have him locked up for a little over a year and a half at a significantly below market value contract. Why the hell should you feel the impetus to have to do something about that? There's no real requirement to give him more money now. So why would you? And I guess what I'm saying here, when you look at this situation overall, like I referenced before, I totally get MJF's viewpoint. Who wants to get underpaid for doing a great job? He's arguably the best talent they have in the company. He wants to get paid like he's the best talent. That is not different in any way, shape, or form than any of us with our work. Would you want to get underpaid by 25, 50, 75, 100%? I certainly wouldn't think so, and you know you wouldn't. So why would it be so bad for MJF to want to sit there and not be in that spot as well? But really, honestly, I come back to this, is that this is ultimately a mistake of his own damn doing. Like it's his own damn fault for signing that five-year deal. And sometimes we have to learn painful lessons in life. Just how it goes. Look, MJF's a star. MJF is going to make a shit ton of money in his career, whether that comes from Tony Khan or whether that comes from Vince McMahon or some combination over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years of both. I think that's true. But why not want to start making it now, right? I do believe that Tony Khan should be working feverishly to get a new deal done with MJF. I really, really do. Might give him more money, add another year or two to the deal. There you go. And make sure that it has progressive escalators in terms of its overall annual value and payouts and so forth. All of that. MJF deserves to be paid like a top guy. And you could certainly make the argument that by taking care of MJF now sets a precedent for some of the other talent that, hey, if you develop your skills and you hone your craft and you get to the point where you could be on this type of level, we are going to reward you as such. There is a very positive morale boost and environment that is created when you do something like that. When you do something, you technically don't have to do it as a business, but you choose to anyways because you want to value your people. And you have a passion for your people because it's your people that make your processes. It's your people that make your product at the end of the day. That said, if some of the reports I've seen are true, and that's a big if, but it could certainly be true. I understand MJF saying, well, I want more money now and I don't want to extend my deal. But honestly, that's also really stupid. If you're Tony Khan, if you're AEW, it might be one thing to pay MJF more money. You'd be like, yeah, sure, that makes sense. But we're going to get something out of it, too. We're not going to sit there and give you more money just for the next year and a half when we already had you under contract for the next year and a half when we literally get absolutely nothing tangible or quantifiable for that. Now, if you said, hey, MJF, we are going to pay you top money. We'll rip up the existing deal, but we're going to branch this out until 2025 or 2026. We're going to give you top money, but you're going to give us something. Like, that's a fair position. That's an absolutely fair negotiating position for Tony Khan and AEW. Now, if they're not doing that, that's dumb. If MJF has a problem with that, frankly, I think that's also kind of dumb. Because great deals happen when both sides have to give and get. That's the art of negotiation. MJF has some leverage, but it's minimal. He does not have an overwhelming amount of leverage, especially right now. And as far as playing the WWE card goes, he needs to be really careful with that too. Because he could overrepresent and over leverage his position and his leverage to the point where AEW in 2024 wouldn't want him back 
And the only place that would reasonably want him and pay him a salary that he would command would be WWE, which then would mean that he's undercutting his own damn leverage and value, and WWE feels like they don't have to pay him as much as they thought they might have to. you got to be careful. Like, life is all about leverage. Who has it? Who wants it? Who yields it? Who utilizes it? As you get closer to 2024, MJF's leverage continues to grow. But if he overplays his hand too much, he will find himself with a lot less leverage than he envisions. The leverage right now is with AEW and Tony Khan to give this man more money, which he's earned the right to, which you should do, and extend his deal probably by at least a year or two. Kick that can down the road. That's what should happen here. Now, if MJF doesn't want to add years to his deal, even if they give him top money, then that's on him. If AEW doesn't really want to give him top money right now, then that's on them. I really hope it works out for both parties involved and we ultimately hear at some point that MJF and AEW have agreed to a new long-term deal where he's getting paid like the top guy he deserves to get paid like. I really do. Because as far as MJF throwing out the WWE card, be careful, buddy. That's all I can say. Be careful what you wish for, because when you get it, you might find out that the pasture's not always greener on the other side.